Um, thank you, Dominic. Um, it is Bird Fair. Um, I'm the CEO of the league. Uh, we banned this year shooting on Welsh national land. We banned it at Cardiff University. We hope to ban it very shortly at Yorkshire Water. And with Chris's help at the front there, we hope to take the 21% that is Scottish grouse moors by our lead in the revived coalition to make shooting of grouse a thing of the past in Scotland. My question, however, is hunting. And 85% of uh, people in this country, a record high, whether it's in the town or the country, say that hunting with dogs is wrong. They do not like it. And as recent elections have proven, and leadership election contests, it's really something they don't want to see. In a time when the country is so fractured, wouldn't it be great if we could rally around something that pretty much everyone in this country wants to see? My question to the panel is, will they support politicians aligning with the public in calling for a strengthening of the woeful hunting act and how could they perhaps help in bringing that end about thank you, thank you. in some ways to me it's the absurdities of british politics i couldn't believe in the toy leadership race uh, that jeremy hunt actually brought this back up because i thought a lesson had been learned from theresa may two years earlier that actually this is a very very popular piece of legislation, the Hunting Act, for good reason. And, and people often say to me, and I said this when I was remarking on that on television at the time, that you have to have a balance in the law. You need to ensure, for example, that if we send people to prison quite rightly for sending their dogs down badger sets to rip badgers apart for baiting, that equally we must apply the law to people that choose to infringe the Hunting Act and allow hounds to continue to kill foxes or stags or hares. And it doesn't matter that the individuals who are doing that have political influence or own land or justices of the peace or magistrates or journalists. It's the same criminal, horrible cruelty, and that's why that law was applied. But I'm afraid at times, I sometimes think I'm still banging my head against a brick wall trying to make that argument with certain people politically and others in the landowning and shooting and, and, and areas like that. So that's from my perspective, but I'd like to get, get the panel's view. Deborah, what's your view on fox hunting? And, my husband's sitting in the front row and he will be testimony to the fact that one morning he saw me at 8 o'clock out in my dressing gown because they were out exercise, exercising their dogs along the drove. So standing on the barrier of our land with my hands on my hips saying, don't you dare. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Absolutely um, aligned with the, of course, we shouldn't be hunting animals. Um, we, we should. However, I will say one thing, and again, it's a back to the planned issue. We shouldn't be hunting. I, would I support a politician that had that on their agenda? I make the decisions on the politicians I support who achieve most of what I want, and it is never a single issue. So of course I couldn't say that if I believe with 95% they did 95% of wonderful things. So I couldn't say that, but it would certainly be very high up on my agenda where I was looking, because in seeing a politician that would support that, I would have to question their ethics and their beliefs. So I, if that's a direct answer to that question, and I just want to say something else. We get very, very animated about hunting. I get very animated about hunting. But farming, boy, do we do an awful lot more harm in terms of the caged animals, you know. And we really ought to put as a, 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 the same amount of energy into making sure that our farmed animals are cared for as we do our hunted animals. Where you are now and all your experience and knowledge, obviously it's cruel to hunt a fox with hounds, but is yes. there a danger that we get too obsessed by this issue? Obviously lots of foxes are killed, you know, for so-called pest control reasons up and down the country every day, including by NGOs that protect ground nesting birds and things like that, as well as farmers, landowners. Um, it is cruel, but, you know, be honest, is it something that you think we should be giving such a priority to? Should, is it really that important, or is it more an ethical issue from your point of view? Um, 
obviously it's important and, and it is ethical. Um, I just note, however, that in relation to this and in relation to the question about hen harriers and eagles, we're actually talking about things that are already illegal. Yes. People shouldn't be out hunting foxes with dogs, they shouldn't be shooting hen harriers, they shouldn't be trapping golden eagles. And so going back and like making the law, making it even more illegal, I don't know if that's going to do it, actually. And it's really interesting, this reflection of, you know, the minority interest. 85% of people want this even more banned than what the statistic is. Um, but yes, there is an overwhelming majority of people who don't want cruelty to animals. That's for sure right. I do wonder, however, about the extent to which we don't get the right outcome if we demonise minorities. So 85% think this, 15% don't think it and we gang up on the 15% and what are they doing? It's back to that same dynamic. They dig deeper trenches, they dig deeper defences, and they go off and do their thing and they test the law and they grow. And I wonder whether, not alongside you know, legal remedies, and I'm not saying let's not have legal remedies, I just wonder if some people, and not necessarily everybody who's interested in this, but whether some people might want to focus on culture change as part of the way in we get in which we get people to change their behaviour. And actually, you know, thinking of things that are minorities and, and majority interests, I spent years and years and years campaigning to get renewable energy into this country's electricity mix. 85% of people wanted that, but a minority still overturned it. And, you know, why was that? It was because there was a cultural clash going on. It wasn't about the facts of the matter. It was about two cultures smashing together and as it happened, the politics of that issue, they managed actually to overturn the policy of onshore wind being supported. And I don't think that, that wasn't good. And had I run that last 20 years again now, I might say to myself, actually, let's go and talk to these people who are really concerned about the landscape impacts before we have a massive campaign telling them that they're wrong and that the majority of people think they're stupid, which is basically what we did. And, you know, that didn't lead to a good outcome. So I'm totally in favour of the law being upheld. People should not be hunting with foxes, any animal. Sorry, I'm hunting uh, with dogs. They shouldn't be shooting or poisoning hen harriers or any other bird of prey. And I think if we're going to get from where we are with these appalling things still going on, it's not only about the law, it's about culture, and that's about talking to people and bringing them on a journey, is my opinion. Just a, another example of how certain individuals are kind of influence are just happy to flout the law. Uh, to a great extent, I think, I think it is. I think it's highly symbolic. I think the case has been made that foxes are not rare animals in the UK. They're in fact extraordinarily common animals, notably down to those 60 million game birds that we introduced and the imbalance of that that's causing with certain generalist predators carrying those foxes. I mean, that's a supposition because we don't have the science, which is why Wild Justice have asked DEFRA to investigate the impact of putting down the 60 million birds, and part of that impact is the impact that it will have on those generalist predators. So the fox is never going to be a rare animal. We're not arguing about conservation here. But for me, the symbolic nature of fox hunting reflects so more, much more broadly on us as a society. And when DEFRA says that she will make a moral and ethical judgment of a politician who might support fox hunting, she's right. And that's what we do as humans. We don't just think about the black and white that we're told. We are able, through our sophistication and our, uh, our, our experience, to make those sorts of judgments. And I'm afraid that from my point of view, and again, I, I share Tony's ideals when it comes to creative dialogue to instigate cultural change. But this has been going on all of my life. I still walk from my house, the cook, twice a week to see people tearing wildlife to pieces with dogs for fun. And I've had enough of it. And I think that if we leave the infrastructure in place, they will continue to abuse it. That's why we should ban fox hunting, all the red coats, all the dogs, and then there could be no criminality. And that's why I think we should ban driven grass shooting. Because if we try to introduce any regulation, as fox hunting has proved, we can't police it and it continues. It simply has no place in the modern world at all.
go to John Burton, please. We go to another international issue. John Burton. Uh,